Welcome to Beyond the Press Release, a production of Gorecom, where we take the time to speak with small cap executives right after they put out important news. Who do we got? He's back again. Bernard Turion, Chairman, CEO, HPQ Silicon trades on the TSX Venture Exchange on the stock symbol HPQ. They almost don't need any introduction. Uh, they've been a market darling uh, in 2020. Uh, there, but for those of you kind of new to the story, and hey, even for future investors, are going to be coming back to read this for a first time. HPQ is a Canadian producer of uh, what we call innovative silicon solutions. They're building a portfolio of unique, high-value specialty silicon products that are going to be needed for the upcoming renewable energy revolution. Uh, and they're doing that with two world-renowned technology partners. Uh, now, more than just lip service, they've already got an N NDA with at least two battery and uh, renewable energy players that we know of. And uh, they received their first pre-order for product uh, from a major auto manufacturer that's going to be delivered in December. So clearly, HPQ isn't just talking a big game to ride the renewable energy revolution. They're delivering. And today's announcement, HPQ partner, Apollon Solar delivers first batch of carbon coated nano silicon powders to INRS for evaluation. That's a mouthful. Let's talk about it with Bernard. Welcome back, my friend. Thank you. All right. So that is obviously a mouthful of a headline. HPQ partner Apollon Solar delivers the first batch of carbon coated nano silicon powders for evaluation. Before mm -hmm. we go into the little details of that for everyone at home, Mm -hmm. Take us through in 45 seconds to a minute. What's the general importance of carbon coated nano silicon powders? Okay. Um, fundamentally, okay, the silicone is really needed for the battery revolution. Uh, I actually read an, an article that was very interesting, which says without silicone, you can't guess, but you cannot get fast charging. The issue is there is some there is some problems with you know how the silicone reacts to lithium and what it goes through. One of the solutions that uh, many scientists believe will be um, is carbon encoding silicon. Some people are talking encoding it in graphite and all those types of materials. So there's a lot of discussion about this. So as I you know so that's really an important way to allow silicone to reach its full potential in the battery space. It's not the only one, but it, it is one. So it's something very interesting for us to look at. Second, uh, what's HPQ's competitive advantage uh, with its carbon-coated nanosilicon powders? Well, in a previous press release, we issued that the nano reactor that we're developing with Pyro, okay, would have a, a carbon encoding capacity in one step during the same step we're doing production. Right now, the processes uh, follow a bit what we're doing right now with, with Apollon, which is you have the material, then it goes through a different operational process where the where the encoding is done, so you get the material coded. So it's an extra piece of equipment, capex, and everything else. Our advantage, our cost advantage is going to be being able to do in one step. Now, before we can get there, uh, it'd be very very good to try to understand the mechanic, uh, the scientific mechanics, and, well, mechanics. Sorry about this. That's all right. Uh, it's one of those English words I have a problem with. Anyway, <laughs> the, the mechanics of how carbons and silicon react together, how you make them work in batteries, what size, what's, what's the thickness of the coating, everything else. So there, there, there was going to be anyway some, some R&D that we would need to do to get the right material. So what we're able to do uh, with this and what we're announcing with this is we are starting this even before we start producing the, the materi our material from uh, the nano reactor. So that's really, really important. And it really gives us a competitive advantage in the sense that we will be able to have hard data on the material we'll be producing and we will understand what's, what's the best um, end results or end product that investors are gonna be looking. Plus we're gonna have the opportunity of offering. So because some battery manufacturers gonna say, we have our own in-house encoding process. And some of them says, oh, we like the, this idea. So it's all part of uh, our strategy to have a wide, you know, product range to offer, but we want to be the silicone providers to battery manufacturers. So, you know, you can't offer just one type. So we have to have that, uh, that ability. I saw the term R and D consortium. 
that's the first time I've seen you, um, you know, uh, define it that way or name it that way. Mm -hmm. So what's the R&D consortium? Well, fundamentally, it is Apollon Solar, VNAS. We issued a press release uh, last year which said we are working with Professor Lionel Rouet, which is one of the top uh, uh, Canadian experts on silicone for batteries. Okay. Uh, he's one of his expertise. He works for us. He works for other companies that are graphite or looking way of coming of incorporated silicone. Um, so for us, it gives us a pathways where a third party validation from a university professor. Okay? So it really simplifies when you have the results. So our, our basically R&D consortium is Pyrogenesis, Apollon, and DNAS together right now. That, that, that's who makes the core of our R&D part. And it gives us uh, much more depth of, um, of expertise and where the, my job at HPQ is to make sure that everybody works. You know, I, I'm sort of like the, 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 the orchestra, you know, the, the, um, the conductor of an orchestra. Okay. My job is to make sure that everybody works at the best advantage of the project. So what happened in this case is when Apple launched our press release about pyrogenesis capacity to do one step encoding, we started to have discussions as well. You know, we could we could do some encoding also in our nano pore silicone that we're developing. All right, because I was going to ask you that. Yeah, and and, and, as, and as a discussion evolved, it says, okay, that's a good idea. And then discussion evolved. Well, you know, instead of waiting on pyro, not because it's going to be an issue, but right now, you know, I want the guys at pyro to be focused on delivering the material in December and, and the first right. nano file. Right. It says why? Well, that why Apple Solar is doing this because when I saw that, I said, okay, hold on. In the past, you had mentioned yeah. that. Pyro can already do this in one step. Yeah, yeah. But then I started thinking, why is Apple the partner that's creating and submitting it? And I started thinking potentially, mm -hmm. are they opening new markets potentially? Are they exploring additional opportunities? I wasn't sure as to you know what No, it's it's all it's all related to our work together. You know, Apollon works for us and we we work with Pyrogenesis, but it's my job to make sure that everybody can work. Okay. It's it's my job to get the most out of everybody so so I, I can end up with the 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 I, we can get the project advanced in an intelligent fashion. So oh, that's great. So the, the guys at Apollo said we can do this, and then and then when they said we can do it for their nanopores, then we had this discussion: is oh, you know, can we find a way to test it on material that's going to be pretty close to what we're going to be producing with, with the uh, the nano reactor? And the answer was yes. The only issue with this is, as I said in press release, is that uh, that material is very expensive, and it goes back to proving my point, which I've been repeating ad nauseum. You know, some people even say like it. I'm almost sleazeball repeating it, okay? But in a certain way, at repeating it at, at, at nauseum is that silicone's usage in batteries is known. The solutions are known. Nanoparticles, encoding are, is a solution, different type of playing with the chemicals. All the solution is known. The problem is the cost of making the material, okay? Battery manufacturing, I was listening to an, another presentation, it was very interesting about another, you know, you know, another company working work the project, not, not for the same thing. They basically said battery manufacturers don't want to pay a penny more than what they're paying right now for graphite. Okay. Right. But they want to get the extra kick and they want silicone in their batteries. That is the, that is the problem of the industry. Okay. It is not, will silicone work? It's, can you make the damn stuff cheap enough to, you know, to, to, to build the billion batteries that are going to be needed. Well, and you have the CapEx and OpEx advantages already, right? Well, we have the CapEx and OpEx advantage because we're looking at simple one-step processes. Okay, that's already very simple. Somehow, when you... you uh, other companies seem to have a tendency of having multiple complex processes. Okay, there, there's some of them says, well, we're going to be recycling solar panels. Well, if you understand what solar panels are, is yes, it's very high purity silicone, but once you get them, it's going to be full of junk. So you're going to have the hard work to, to get them into it. What we're doing is very, very simple. Okay. We can take quartz, which is a low value, natural, uh, uh, very, very um, material that's very present in, in nature. Okay. Convert it into silicone. Be the cheapest guy to convert to silicone. And then we can take that silicone and turn it into nanoparticles that the battery manufacturers work. So for us, it was just a, an opportunity to use the skill that everybody has. So when, when we started to mention that we were looking at doing carbon encoding, 
Apple and said, we can start to do them right now for you. Would this be helpful? And I said, yes. So they started to produce this and then they're, we're, they're gonna produce more material. So we end, we'll end up having tested a lot of material even before we get the material from, uh, from, from, uh, from Parma. So you're going through all this and then you drop this nugget in your quote. We are very confident that demand for the silicon materials we will produce with our low cost scalable process mm -hmm. uh, will be high by batteries and EV electric vehicles, EV manufacturers in this renewable energy revolution. I mean, you don't say anything that without well, having a reason. Uh, I'm, why I'm are, sort of saying why are you so confident? Well, I'm sort of saying a vérité de la, la palisse, as we see in French, which is like a, something that's so true, it's, 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 it's almost self-evident, okay? Reality is the world is look, going through renewable energies and it's gonna succeed. I'll bring a quote that's very funny. I was having a discussion with somebody else about this. Uh, as you know, we, were, we, we know the solar market because we, we worked on it, we studied into it. And Bill Gates said not long ago, he says, you know, people should stop investing in trying to make a better solar panel. There's enough capacity of solar. The, the system is, the problem is energy storage. That's, that's, that is the problem and is the solution for renewable energy. Sure. And then he went on to say something which I did not know. When solar industry started and when there was tons of naysayers into it, okay, about it's never going to be that big. It's never going to be able to replace petroleum. It's never going to be able to do this. Okay, um, there was a study made by a different group about what could be the the performance and the capacities of batteries and everything else, and what's going to be the, the worldwide demand. And there was one one that was done by Greenpeace, not the most by business who? Green um, yeah Green uh, Greenpeace uh, the, oh those, Greenpeace okay sorry yeah, yeah, yeah Greenpeace, and they came up with a number which everybody thought was crazy, never going to reach there. When in hindsight, that number was conservative. At one point, the ball becomes rolling so fast, so big, it's going to be going there. How do I know this? A, I, I noticed this by the emails I'm getting. Okay, We haven't yet finished our HPQ Nano website, which is going to be sort of like transactional, where people were going to start to be able to describe the material we do and everything else. And I'm starting to get email from people. Okay, uh, for applications that, are, that even extend the battery space, says, so okay, we want to do it for this, but we need nanoparticles of silico. Uh, we need, like, okay, like, and, and so this is where my R&D consortium comes in. Some people come in and says, okay, I'm looking to do this material with your nanoparticle particle of silicone. So oh, I have no clue this. I send it to guys at Apple. Okay, okay, this is what they're looking to do. And then we can start a discussion. Uh, mm -hmm. Other aspect, I'll talk to the guys at Paro. So the team we have built that works very well together uh, it's very advantageous for us to do what we want to do because what we want to do as a company is make money selling nano silicone powder. Okay, that's what it is. Uh, so if a market is very, the more markets we have, the more interest is going to be for our product. The easier is going to be for us to commercialize, advance the project to commercial scales, and start moving on. I love the fact that you're getting email already, and you don't even have the HPQ nano silicon website up yet. Yeah. So this is strictly people reading press releases, word of mouth, maybe Watching these videos, I did, you, maybe, you, I, I don't know, but I'm getting surprised. That's pretty damn, sorry, go ahead. I'm getting surprised. A number of people have actually seen these videos. You know, I thought there was like an, an obscene club of small people who were watching this, but it's getting to be bigger and more people are watching it, doing the due diligence, looking at it, being interested into it. So, uh, yeah, yeah. The overnight five-year success story. Well, how do I know I'm successful is when I'm sort of laughing when I'm seeing new companies starting up, which are sort of repeating my business model of five years ago. So I said, okay, I'm in the right spot. Because you well, can't, you you can't catch up to what I'm doing. Sil Agoracom Silicon is, uh, is going <laughs> to go public on Monday. <laughs> hey, you, you, I've been sitting watching and listening to you and Peter and the group for five years. Maybe I've learned a thing or two, but all kidding aside though, uh, yeah, you're right. Uh, not only are you getting all the email that you're talking about, but if you're getting uh, people start to copy the HPQ silicon, I mean, they're way off. You can't just, good luck if you don't have the partners, but that's, uh, that's the best yeah. form of flattery, like they say. And 
you know, we haven't yet started to talk with Apollon about the hydrogen capacity. That's gonna that's gonna be the fast. That's gonna be the fun, the fastest thing, because the moment we start producing one sample of nanopowders of, of silicon, I'm shipping it back to France because you know, I know how long it takes to get battery information back, but hydrogen is gonna be almost instantaneous. Well, instantaneous. You know. Sorry, I shouldn't say that word. It's gonna be what, what was the word that Peter used? Imminent. Imminent. Yep. Yep. Uh, just, you know, just when we thought we were wrapping up the, now we won't go down the hydrogen. Uh, oh, no. the, the but hydrogen. I want people to realize the, the, the strength, the strength of what we've been build, building over five years. Okay. It's, we've built a very strong foundation yeah. Impressive. on where we're going. And I think it's, you know, I think 2021 is going to be uh, very, very exciting. 2020 was not bad. Well, there's so many issues that were bad, but for us operationally it was good. That was fantastic. And you're saying that almost like we're not going to see you to 2021, but I'm pretty sure we're going to see you uh, a couple of times Moi, in between in, in December, given the fact that, you know, the, uh, the reactor is, is scheduled. Yeah, well, no, no. Let, let, let's make, make it very, very clear. You're going to see me in December because the reactor is starting in December. So, you know. Beautiful. It's... I love that. That's what, that, that's great confidence. Fantastic. Bernard, man, thanks for, thanks for coming on as always. It's you're gracious because you take the time. Look, this is a very complicated, even just as headline alone, right? As 10 different implications. Mm -hmm. And if you weren't doing these kind of things, I would shudder to think, I don't know how many videos we've done together, but if you weren't doing these kind of videos, I would shudder to think what the level of knowledge would be among shareholders. I wouldn't blame them, including me, right? But the fact that you do these beyond the press releases to really have these kind of conversations. I Hopefully I do a good job asking the questions that investors are thinking of. And by I, the way- I miss the time when we're in the garage. We're yeah, there, the, the, Agora, the Agora garage, remember that? The Agora yep. Comp garage in me. We come, look, we got lights now, right? We got lights. <laughs> yeah, I got the lights The fact too. that you do this um, has put the company ahead by light years because i can't imagine you know there'd probably be a very small group of very intelligent people who would understand it and the rest of us including me would probably say i'm not sure what this is so uh even today very helpful really appreciative my man uh thanks for joining us thank you you've been watching or you've been listening by your favorite podcast on spotify google apple etc bernard turion chairman ceo hpq silicon resources Trades on the TSX Venture Exchange on the stock symbol HPQ. For those of you who are new to the story, and hopefully it's going to be a lot of you for good reason, not because you, not because no one's ever heard of it, but more and more people. Uh, we see the numbers, we see the views and everything climbing. So that's great. And we thank all of you for giving your attention to HPQ and tuning in. But if you need to do more dil due diligence, you know, there it is. The URL is right above Bernard's head, hpqsilicon.com. Get there. The second thing I would suggest is if you haven't watched or listened, that's a great thing. You can listen to these while you're driving, while you're walking. You don't have to sit here and stare at Bernard and my face if, if you don't want to do that. Uh, play catch up on, on the interviews we've done. And uh, hopefully that's going to lead to a couple of questions, which ends you up at the HBQ verified forum on Agoracom, which means you post the questions, it's all civil there, and you know that's Bernard and or his team that are going to be answering, and uh, and then hopefully you discover your next great small cap company. Thanks for joining us, everyone. Have a fantastic day. See you next time.